Yeah, a lot of bouncy guys. On the, the blue lights indicating when he shifts, and you can see the porpoising. Look at the uh, camera Oof. bouncing around. Well, every career comes with its advantages and disadvantages, right? With porpoising being the F1's new buzzword, what's the issue with the F1 season this year and the F1 drivers? What's this porpoising? Why are the racers facing turbulence issues on the tracks? They ain't flying. Keep watching and we will answer all of your questions. What happens is, as the car gets sucked down by the forces, the downforce generated by the underside of that, that wing, that floor... In this 2022 F1 World Championship campaign, even the best wheelmen in the fastest cars aren't immune to the scourge known as porpoising. Basically, it's what's happening when you see a driver's head bobbing up and down conspicuously and repeatedly while his vehicle screams down the track. Does it happen all the time? And does it happen with all of the F1 cars? In light of the new technical regulations introduced this season, one of the biggest changes of the 2022 F1 cars has been the switch from overbody downforce to a ground effect philosophy. This approach means that downforce is predominantly generated by airflow under the car, sucking it down to the ground. And a side effect of this philosophy is porpoising. All the while, the downforce keeps the car firmly in contact with the track, giving the tyres grip and traction. Mercedes and other teams have been struggling with porpoising since the start of the season. Ferrari has also been struggling with porpoising on track this year via Charles Leclerc and teammate Carlos Sainz. However, this only seems to affect the car at high speeds. So why is it happening? Before that, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. A key component of ground effect in Formula One is the use of wind tunnels built into the car's underbody, also known as Venturi tunnels. The airflow through these spaces must be uninterrupted for the desired benefits to be realized properly, which are directing force towards the road via the tires to maximize speed and traction. When airflow is alternatingly obstructed and resumed rapidly due to inefficient design or vehicle damage, when this happens, the floor stops generating downforce. The floor of the car literally hits the track, and the car springs back up to its normal ride height. Suspensions work. However, it immediately starts accumulating air again and is pushed back down, only for the cycle to repeat. This produces that noticeable bouncing effect that drives racing teams crazy and can seriously impact who wins championships as it gets very hard to control the car if it's bouncing, especially at high speeds, and it prevents it from going as fast as it normally should. Damn aerodynamics! Do you know how aerodynamics can play a major role with regard to the speed of an F1 car? Well, F1 cars are shaped like an airplane's wing. How cool is that? <laughs> well, he's wow. been bounced around like that. Well, it's the concentration you need, yeah, yeah. to uh, get an F1 car around this. Sainz, 27, has started 145 races since coming into Formula One in 2015. And he says he is already feeling the impact from the car changes. Carlos Sanz has been experiencing porpoising since the beginning of the season and has recently voiced his concern regarding this phenomenon. In particular, Sanz is worried about its long-term effects on his health. Imagine you are driving at 250 kilometers per hour on a really bumpy, bumpy road. Very uncomfortable, right? Anyone would land up with a bad headache, though. Yes. Sanz further said that if the issues continue, the FIA should be involved when it was the FIA that proposed a change in regulations in the first place. So why suddenly change the regulations? Well, this downforce phenomenon adapted in 2022 isn't a very new concept. Formula One car constructors first explored the possibility of using the underbody to generate downforce in the 1970s and 1980s. They had experienced the phenomenon of porpoising then too, and full ground effect cars were outlawed at the end of 1982. So why exactly did they bring this regulation back? Well, it does make the F1 cars look sexy. 
Still, that ain't the reason. It's been designed specifically to promote better, faster racing cars and safer races. Is putting the drivers into so much all worth it? Is it doing more harm than good? Stay tuned, we've got the answers to all of those questions. But before we move further, let's tickle your brain, all right? Could all this be made up due to the negative effects this new regulation has on the performance factor of a few teams? Because no one really knows what the long-term effects are yet. And no one has actually reported anything so far, even when it was used in the 1980s. As San said, it's still a new idea for me, and I need to talk to the other drivers like George that are still struggling with the same phenomenon to sit together to see what we can offer or propose. So could it all be a hoax? Keep thinking while we get back to the facts. Russell and Carlos aren't the only drivers to complain of the physical impacts of porpoising, with championship leader Charles Leclerc saying after the first pre-season test that the motion made him feel sick. It feels like turbulence on an airplane, going up and down the whole straight, Leclerc told reporters after the initial round of testing in Barcelona. I think this phenomenon doesn't feel nice, it makes you a little bit ill. So what is this? Is it actually causing harm to the driver? Or is it a thing that teams who don't finish first say? Ah, oh, that's just not being very sportive, is it? Or no, could it be that some teams are managing this better than the others? Have some engineers found the solution to porpoising already? Yeah, it's time to put on your thinking caps. Can you think of a solution to this wobbly driver head phenomenon? So there isn't a solution? Yes, there is. That's why we have engineers. The engineers of Red Bull wisely introduced a major upgrade on the very last day of testing in Bahrain, with huge changes to the side pods and floor. The new floor was aimed at reducing the amount of porpoising. Another team that seems to have been brilliantly combating the problem of porpoising is Ferrari. It's not incorrect to say that this solution, that knife-shaped profile which is reinforced with some metal clips on the front wings, should have the same effect as Red Bull's floor, which was, by the way, inspired by a similar device featured on the floor of McLaren, a team that seemed to have porpoising fully under control already in Barcelona. So yes, there are solutions, and teams have already started implementing them, which is a good thing, as this airplane wing-shaped F1 car, a vessel, and you in it, and it's bouncing at 250 kilometers per hour, might do some long-term damage. That's what Carol's said too. I have done checks on my back and neck tightness, and this year it is tighter everywhere. I am already feeling it. I don't need expert advice to know that 10 years like this will be tough. We don't know for sure what porpoising is causing in the long run. There were no cases or any proof of medical problems occurring to the drivers during the 1970s and 80s as well, so it's hard to tell. Teams are managing them, and drivers are learning to combat it. So it's a sport, and you drift through the turns, race down the lanes, learn and fight to the finish line. But no decision has been taken regarding this, and more research or changes might be needed as we're talking about aerodynamics here, temperature, pressure changes, the whole thing. As Saint said, I think the tricky bit will be when we go to circuits that we haven't been testing, because I still believe that tarmac and the conditions, the heat, the air pressure, everything affects the aerodynamics, so it affects the bouncing. Well, that's all for this video, guys. We'll be back with further updates. I'm pretty sure we'll be back with more on porpoising. And you don't want to miss anything from us. If you still haven't hit the bell icon, do it now. We want to see you soon. Bye.